The Hong Kong Disneyland Resort is sometimes a forgotten one by Disney fans. And there is actually some reasoning behind that, being the smallest resort and featuring just one park, which is also the smallest Disney castle style park in the world, and three resort hotels, it's not hard to understand why. The thing is, that it wasn't always supposed to be like that. Hotels, shopping and even a new park were going to be built. The Walt Disney Company was looking to build a new theme park destination in Asia during the 90s, this time in China. The 90s were both great and weak for the House of Mouse, as they had made a huge investment in France with Euro Disney, which opened in 1992 and was bringing many financial troubles to the company, as Europe was hit with a bad housing crisis right before opening and the several hotels built by Disney were often with many empty rooms. During this time, many projects were either cancelled or scaled back, such as Westcott in California, which became Disney's California Adventure, or Animal Kingdom that saw the loss of an entire land beastly kingdom. Even with the troubles, this new resort went ahead with development nonetheless. In 1999, the Hong Kong government and the Walt Disney Company came to agreement on the theme park, which was to open in 2006. The original concept was to have a Disneyland-style park with several lands. Main Street USA would serve as the entrance to the park, Fantasyland would be the magical home of Disney animated characters, Toontown, a wacky upside world where Disney friends live and play, Adventureland, where guests would embark on thrilling journeys to exotic regions of exploration, explore a bazaar or take a roller coaster through the dark jungle and even go to a dinosaur excavation site. Frontierland would be based on the Wild West and have attractions such as the Raft Ride or the Haunted Mansion. And at last, Tomorrowland would be a world of sci-fi future with characters such as Buzz Lightyear and feature a thrilling space mountain. To be located in a newly land-filled Penny's Bay, the resort was to be a joint venture between Disney and the Hong Kong government, with the latter owning 52% and the American company 48%. Since then, several budget cuts happened on Disney's side, because the mouse wasn't doing so well. With new animation and live-action movies flopping in theaters, theme parks underperforming and other problems. These budget cuts ultimately paved the way to some strange concepts to save money. Theming was to be cut, no bodies of water were to be featured, and even the castle was to be made in a 2D small world style. Imagineers later secured more funding and the theming was saved, but not all the previously proposed lands would be featured and the park, while well themed, would be much smaller. Construction begins and shortly after the resort opens on September 12, 2005. Yes, the park is ready to open on Monday. Uh, everything seems to be in place. Uh, our 5,000 new cast members are ready to go and it's ready to open its gates to this part of the world and who knows what's in store for it in the future, but I think it's all very positive. We've to Mr. Iger said, the park was ready to open, though it's quite odd how he talks about Shanghai Disneyland, a park that was years from even starting active development. This shows just how much trust Disney had in Hong Kong Disneyland. Even if the park didn't turn a profit, the Walt Disney Company would still make money through licensing and operating fees, due to the partial ownership that takes place, the same that used to happen in Paris. I talked about the many expansions that took place and even the future of the park with Frozen coming soon and the Avengers Eek ticket attraction for Tomorrowland in a previous video. But what was the original plan? What could Hong Kong Disneyland Resort be today if things were done according to how it was originally designed? Well, the park would have more lands than the four that were to be found when it opened, with Frontierland and Toontown as I previously said. Hotel-wise, there would be four overlooking the water, which would provide a seamless guest experience and have more than 2,000 rooms, and not the two that were there. 
RD&E, retail, dining and experiences, were also to be built between the park, plaza and hotels. Here guests would have the opportunity to enjoy a variety of shopping and dining experiences within a 28,000 square meter complex, with expansions also possible. That was phase one of the project, somewhat similar to what ended up happening, but bigger as there were only two hotels at opening and the shopping and retail complex was nowhere to be found, even to this day as that area is still completely empty. The phase two of the project is the one that interests us the most as that would truly expand the resort. In the agreement, the government would reclaim a lot more land and reserve it for Disney for 20 years, counting from 1999 and be available to purchase for a price of $2.8 billion. In these 60 hectares, Disney would be able to build new experiences, the most likely and planned option being a second park. Meet Disney's Enchanted Forest, what seems to be an older proposed second gate for Hong Kong Disneyland. It would be a mix of Disney Sea and Animal Kingdom, and the idea of the park is quite simple. What if you got lost in the woods? From there, you would be able to explore many attractions and have different experiences. You wouldn't find a medieval castle in this one, but a beautiful mixture of a treehouse and a castle, where inside many things would be available to explore. Just by taking a look at this concept, we get a taste of some of these. Letting down from the wooden spires and into the base of this treehouse, we come across a cavern with a dragon inside. This could be a similar animatronic to the very impressive one that can be found beneath Sleeping Beauty's castle in Disneyland Paris. On top of it seems to be a meet and greet location with the mouse himself. Emerging from the dragon's lair, there are a set of stairs that lead inside the rocky bottom. A sudden appearance of Merlin convinces me that these stairs actually lead you to his shop, once again similarly to Disneyland Paris. It's clear to say that this would be a quite impressive icon, but there's so much to explore. To the side, we can spot an Alice in Wonderland maze, with the middle of the maze being a recreation of growing Alice inside the house. It seems to be quite a big maze as well, would be interesting to try and find a way out of there. The small flying carousel ride also seems to be featured here, with leaf-shaped vehicles that could be themed to Tinkerbell. This overview, while quite blurry, shows the layer of the park and showcases how it could have been. You enter what seems to be a straight street similar to the layout of Disneyland, which then leads you to the treehouse castle. This more technical look at the central icon allows us to see that from there, guests would be able to go everywhere in the park, truly serving the same job as a castle. To the side of this, you can see a large body of water. It's possible that in here, the Imagineers wanted to add a pirate's land that had been proposed for the other gate. This time, a more mystical take with boats from Singapore pirates that can be seen in the movie franchise. Being based on the movies, could the ride be the same concept as the one later built in Shanghai? Also, one other thing can be spotted in this concept art, and that seems to be the bathhouse from the highly acclaimed animated movie Spirited Away made by Studio Ghibli. By taking a look at this overview layout, it becomes clear that this could have been one of the e-ticket attractions, judging by the size of the show building. Unfortunately, that's pretty much all that's known for the concept of the second game, as it was in early development before being stopped. Talking about the future of the resort, the second gate doesn't seem likely anytime soon, and in 2020, in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, the option for Hong Kong Disneyland to buy the second plot of land preserved for them ended. Disney was extremely disappointed in the decision, as the area was used as a pandemic quarantine facility for the next couple of years before a long-term purpose is determined. Now, is this the end for Hong Kong's second gate? No, not yet at least. The pandemic is now under full control with the majority of people already vaccinated. With this, the need for such facilities becomes lesser each day that passes. So could this once again be offered to the resort as an expansion after the quarantine camp closes? Of course it can. The question is, does Disney want it?
Hong Kong was only profitable for three years since opening, but the future does seem promising. New expansions have happened, and with a new Frozen-themed land opening later this year, and the Marvel e-ticket also coming in the next few years, could we be soon witnessing a new era for the resort? Even if it were to be the case, what kind of second park would it be? The Enchanted Forest seems unlikely with today's Disney. Ideal Buildout made an amazing plan to build a Hong Kong Disney Sea Park in this plot of land, which includes some parts from the existing Disney Sea in Tokyo and completely new ones like a Star Wars outpost and a pirate-themed Buccaneer Bay. Of course, this is just wishful thinking and does not represent reality, but dreaming is free. I recommend checking the full build out on the link down below as they made an incredible job. The only question now is, will Hong Kong ever get a second gate? I guess only time will tell. Hey there, hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram and Discord. Links are in the description. And now, as always, thank you for watching. And that's a wrap.